Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope that you're all prepping and get ready for Thanksgiving, and I wish all those that are uh, traveling uh, safe travels. This week, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, fire sprinkler protection in electrical rooms and the conditions that allow us to exempt that. I know this is something that a lot of us uh, um, get approached with and we get told about exemptions, but a lot of times we don't know exactly where those exemptions are. So uh, I hope that you enjoy this brief video and, uh, and look forward to coming back to you next week. Let's take a look at the questions that we'll attempt to answer this week. When a fire sprinkler system is installed, does sprinkler protection have to be provided in an electrical room? Can sprinklers be omitted in these rooms? These are good questions, and if you're new to this field, may not know the answer. Uh, so hopefully, uh, we can dive into this and, and draw those conclusions. The simple answer to this question is, it depends. If you look to the right, you'll see a portion of sprinkler shop drawings that I received several months ago. And as you'll see, there, it's pointing to an electrical room, and it says no protection required per section in FPA 13. To the layman, they would say, oh, okay, well, they meet that section, so they're good. They don't have to provide it. But nothing here shows me that they have met the criteria in that section. Looking at 8.15.11.1 in NFPA 13, it says, unless the requirements of 8.15.11.3 are met, sprinkler protection shall be required in electrical rooms. So we have to provide it unless all of those four criteria in 8.15.11.3 are provided or accounted for. The key word that I want you to look at in this passage is all. Sprinklers shall not be required in electrical rooms where all of the following conditions are met. All conditions must be met to not require sprinkler protection in electrical rooms. The first condition detailed that must be met is that rooms in, are dedicated to electrical equipment only. That means exactly what it says. If there's anything else in that, in that room, then it doesn't meet the conditions, or at least condition number one. Condition two is that only dry type electrical equipment is used. Dry type simply means that it's cooled by normal air ventilation. Condition three is that all equipment is installed in a two hour enclosure. That means from ceiling to floor to walls, and then even the penetrations are protected in accordance with chapter seven of the International Building Code. And lastly, condition four is that no combustible storage is permitted to be stored in the room. What I do um, when we are omitting sprinklers uh, because of the four criteria, I'll make them place a sign similar to what there is on the right that states that there is no storage permitted, meaning that storage at any time is not allowable, um, not just at CO. So as you can see, all four conditions must be met to be able to omit sprinklers in an electrical room. This can be challenging, uh, but it's not going to stop sprinkler designers from attempting to just say, hey, they meet the exemption without knowing they meet the exemption. So you as a plans examiner will need to reference the architectural sheets and electrical sheets when looking at the sprinkler shop drawings to determine if sprinklers can actually be omitted or not. In summary, it's important to note that sprinklers must be installed in electrical rooms at an ordinary group one design unless those four criteria that we outlined earlier are met. Thank you for being with me this week, and I look forward to coming with you with a new topic next week. Have a great Thanksgiving.